What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to illustrate a volcano. So right here I have my sketch and it's already drawn already and I did this on Canson Bristol paper. It's 7 by 10. So I used the HB pencil to sketch this drawing and what I'm going to use to ink it will be my Pentel sign pen. And I will be coloring this later on in the video and I'm going to be using Copic markers. I'm using the E70s. I'm using E71, 74, 77, and 79. Possibly you're going to need a black, but you probably won't, so that's why I don't have it here. But we'll be using Copic markers, but not right now. So what I'm going to do first is use my Pentel sign pen and give this an outline. And I'm going to do that in time lapse really quickly and then come back to you guys. Okay, and I forgot to mention that while you're inking this volcano, keep in mind that a volcano is not man-made. It's made by the contents of the earth. So it's okay if your lines are jagged or if when you're inking, your hand tends to wiggle or anything. So try not to worry too much about that because again, a volcano is not man-made. Also, I purposely did not ink the smoke and ash coming out of the volcano because I wanted to save that for last because smoke is a gas. So oftentimes I won't give outlines to gas because most of the time gas is not visible. But I do have a video on coloring smoke and I'll leave a link to that right up here in the card. But I'll also give you a quick tutorial on how to do that. But for now, let's get back to coloring the volcano. So I'm gonna use my E71 to lay down a base color on the volcano and maybe the rocks that are surrounding it. Okay, so now we gave our volcanoes a base color. Now at this point we want to determine our light source or at least have it determined before we add our shades. So let's make our light source somewhere up here in the top right hand corner. So that means the shades of this volcano will be towards this way, the left hand side. So we're going to be applying the darkest shades over here. So let's actually work backwards from here on out. So we're going to take our darkest color which is E79 and apply some shades to this side of the volcano. And what you just saw me do is add a couple layers on top of this brown color just to help make that a solid color. Okay, so now that we got our brown in place, let's go with our darker mid-tone, which is E77. And you see all these cracks and wrinkles on the volcano? That's where we're going to be applying this E77. Because as you can see, it's a little bit lighter than the E79. So we're going to use this to blend that out to the base color. And also provide some details onto these cracks or whatever. Okay, and then let me just apply those to the rocks as well. So I'm going to go back with my E79. Add that darker shade. Okay. And now to help bring some of those colors together, we're going to use our lighter mid-tone, which is E74. And you see all the parts where we applied the E77. We're going to blend those out with E74. And just help bring all those colors together. So that way we, when we apply our base color one more time, the E71, it'll all be blended together. Because this E74 is blending with the E77 almost perfectly only because they're close to the same value. And if you don't know what value is, it's how light or how dark a color is. So like, here's this color down here. So this color down here is E77. I'm gonna apply my E74 and you see how they're close to the same value? That means these two colors are easy to blend with each other. So just a little Copic marker tip for you guys on 
how to blend or how easy it is to blend, you also got to worry about the value. And that goes with any marker brand, really. Okay, and now we can go back with our E71 and blend all of those colors together. Alright, so here is our volcano, but we're not done yet because in the drawing that I have, I have mountains in the background and I'm going to use pretty much the same colors to color those, except they'll be behind everything. So the colors that I'm using, they can either be darker or they can be lighter. So out of all the four colors that I use to color in the volcano, I'm just going to take out the lightest one and then we can use the rest of these colors to color in the mountains in the background. So I'm going to do that really quickly and then come back to you guys and show you how to color the smoke. Okay, so we got the mountains colored and everything. So now what I'm going to do is take my white colored pencil and add it to the lighted parts of the volcano. Because remember, our light source is up here to the upper right. So that means the parts of the volcano that are facing the upper right or are on the right in general, that's where we're going to apply this white colored pencil. And this colored pencil would most likely show on the darkest parts of the volcano because the base the base color that we used to color the volcano initially, it's not the same value of the white colored pencil, but it's somewhat close. So that means you'll barely see the white colored pencil over here, but towards the shades, you can see more of the white colored pencil. Let's see if I add more pressure, it becomes even more visible. And also, this is the Prismacolor brand, so the Prismacolor color pencils really act like paints. So it's really good for providing overlays such as this. And then we can also give like a small portion of it to the mountains in the back. Help light those up a little bit. And then we can't forget the rocks down here. Okay, so our volcano is pretty much done. So now let's go to the top and draw the smoke. So just a little reminder, I do have a video on drawing smoke, but for this portion of the video, it's just gonna be really quick. Before the smoke, I'm gonna be using Copic markers. I'm using W7, W9, and a black, number 100 or 110, up to you. But what I'm going to do is, since I still have the sketch visible, may not be visible to you guys, but it's visible to me, I'm going to apply my W7 everywhere on that outline and then color it in. Okay, and now it's already looking like smoke. So now what we're going to do is, again, work backwards and use our 110, our black marker, and just provide some letter U shapes to this, um, to this shape. Like that. Maybe, maybe close to the contours if you can. And then a few marker strokes to match the shape of the volcano. Just to show that the smoke is bursting out from the top or blowing its top really. Now we're gonna use our W9, our mid-tone and blend it back into W7.
basically the same steps that we applied to the volcano itself, but we're just using different colors. That's really the only difference. And then we can go back with our W7 and blend it all together. And by the way, the reason I chose warm colors is because the inside of a volcano is somewhat warm. And if you look throughout the drawing, I pretty much use warm colors because brown is a shade of orange and orange is a mixture of two warm colors, red and yellow. So when you think about it, all these browns and the fact that I'm using warm colors to color the smoke, they all work together. All right, and that's how you color smoke. So what you can do, since I talked about warm colors, is that if you were to provide a sky to this illustration, you can make the sky blue to contrast the fact that there's mostly warm colors used throughout the illustration. That's called contrast. And I do have a video on contrast and how to apply it and examples used throughout history to apply contrast. Link to that video will be up here in the card. And I'll also put a link in the outro. But I'm gonna leave the sky blank for now. You know, as an artist, you can do you. But all the colors that I use in today's video will pop up on the screen somewhere. And it looks like that's about it for today. If you liked the video or found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I can't let a nigga like